Evening. Right, so I was in a pub in the week and, oh God, I'm making a load of noise. Uh, so I was in the pub in the week and they're flicking the channel over on the telly trying to find a football or the horse racing or whatever it was. And they go past MasterChef. Now, strange enough, I don't really watch MasterChef. I don't know why, I've nothing against it. I just don't, I don't watch it. Um, but they were in the middle of cooking well, they, they were doing that presence at the bit at the beginning when they tell you, oh, this is what you're going to be cooking. And it was a, an Asian-style broth with poached sea bass and Thai sticky rice. At least, I might have, I'm not 100% sure how the sea bass was cooked and all that stuff. But, oh, that sounds nice. I'll give that a go. So this is me winging that. I didn't watch the recipe. didn't watch the episode. They turned the channel over to watch the football. Might have been the rugby. But I thought that sounds good. So I'm going to kind of wing it. And you can watch along. So first things first, I've got four, well, f there were four de three cloves of garlic, decent size. There was a few little manky ones in there and two smaller shallots. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna make kind of like a flavor base. Now I'm using a little mini chopper because I've got it to hand. If you wanna just chop the crap out of it on the board, that's fine. Food processor, pestle and mortar, just chop it all up. And then give that a whiz. It hasn't got to be a puree. Right, so in here, I'm going to start constructing our broth. Low heat, a little squidge of vegetable oil, not much at all. I'm going to chuck in that garlic and shallot. I've got a few other little Thai Southeast Asian, I've got kaffir lime leaf. I'd like a couple more, but that's all I could get. And I've got um, lemongrass. Now I'm going to leave the lemongrass whole, but I'm going to split it down the middle carefully because these can be kind of hard to cut and then I'm just going to use the back of the knife to just bash that up that can go in there as well it's Thai chilies I'm going to just split down the middle and they can go in whole and we're just going to let that sweat off until it starts to get a bit fragrant that three, four minutes, and then we're gonna, oh, well, oh, I've got some other stuff. I really wanna get some galangal. I couldn't get it anywhere, but I've got galangal paste. Now, galangal is very heavily used a lot in Thai and some other Southeast Asian um, cuisines. It's kind of similar to ginger, but it's not. It's a lot more fragrant and citrusy and zesty. It's still got a little bit of that heat that garlic's got, uh, that ginger's got, but it's nowhere near as peppery and gingery as, as, uh, as well, ginger is. Oh, there's one other thing I was gonna chuck in there, if I can find it. I'm gonna chuck in a star anise. Just the one decent, oh, that's all in bits. One star anise. And I've got a little bunch of coriander here as well. I'm just gonna take the stalks off like that and they can all go in there as well. Right, so after about two, three minutes, that should be nice and fragrant. Should be uh, the onions and the garlic and stuff should be doing a number on your eyes. We're gonna go in there with about 400 ml of vegetable stock. If you wanted to use chicken stock, you could, but I think that's gonna be a bit more too flavorful for this dish. I'm gonna go in there with about Two teaspoons of fish sauce. About all the fish sauce I've got left. I'll stick that there to remind me to buy some more. And about two tablespoons soy sauce. And this is tamarind paste. Now again, it's used heavily in a Thai cooking. It's kind of a sour, sticky molasses. It looks like molasses, but it's a lot more really sour. And I tried to get palm sugar, but I could not love my money get any palm sugar. So I'm just gonna go in there with about small-ish dessert spoon of caster sugar, just to bring the sweetness back up to it in that. Right, and we're just gonna bring that up to a slight simmer. Now this base, I'm gonna use it to poach the chicken and then we're gonna use it as a, as a broth around our rice and our, not chicken, fish, I'm using sea bass. If you wanted to, you could tar, chuck in into that sugar a tin of coconut cream and you'd get something a little bit more like a curry, like a Thai curry. Or this is just lovely on its own. You can just have this with um, 
noodles would be fine or as a soup on its own even so as that comes up to a simmer we're just gonna turn it down to the barest of simmers because we, what we don't want to do is reduce this by loads because it'll get quite as salty and overpowering and punchy we're just gonna almost make a tea out of it we're just gonna imbibe all of those things so that's that for now i'm just gonna leave that ticking away for about 20 minutes i'm gonna get my rice on in that time as well while i'm uh while i'm waiting and then we'll come back and we'll uh, poach our fish so i'll see you in about 15 20 minutes right welcome back i uh, just need some rice off where are we so we have infused our broth just to taste a bit uh it's quite nice i just want to add a little bit well not a little bit that juice of half a lime is going to go in there now as well uh while you're gone as well i minced up a few, a very small handful of coriander. And I've just toasted off some peanuts that I'm gonna crush as well. They're gonna go on top. And a few slices of chili for garnish as well. Just, you know, make it look a bit pretty. So lime juice in there, give it a stir, give it a taste, see if it needs a bit more. Should be a bit salty, a bit sour, a bit sweet. Should be able to taste that citrusy, lemongrass and uh, galangal notes, lime notes as well now. Oh yeah, that's really nice little punchy number. Right, so we're gonna start poaching our fish. So I've got two sea bass fillets. I've just cut into some interesting shapes. More to make them a plate a bit easier later. But if you don't, can't be bothered with that, don't do that. So I'm just gonna put them in this pan. To be fair, this pan might be a bit big for what I need it for. But it's the only pan that I've got that can fit that all in and has also got a tight fitting lid. Right, so now, we're going to use our broth to poach our salmon. No, our sea bass. So I'm just going to get a ladle full of this. Doesn't matter if any of the other bits and pieces come along for the ride. I'm probably going to need a few. I just want it to come maybe halfway up the thickest part of the fish. If that. Doesn't matter if some goes on top of the fish. All right, and now, lid on. And did I turn that off? No. Bring that heat up a little bit. I'm just going to poach that. I'm going to check it after about eight minutes. It might need a bit longer, but that's not a very thick bit of fish, and we want to very gently poach it. Now, if you want, you can start straining that off. I'm going to leave it there just to keep it warm, and come back and we'll plate up. Um, what was I saying? You can strain that off if you want. Obviously, I'm not going to eat the lemongrass, but I don't mind having a bit of foliage and whatnot in there, so I'm not going to bother straining it. Uh, just going to crush up these peanuts. I'll come back in about eight minutes to check that fish. Right, we're back about 10 minutes. To check the fish, it's almost cooked through. I'm just gonna let it rest, turn the heat off. It's just gently gonna steam away. Got my rice, just put in a little mold, you know, just to add to the flavoring. Flavoring? The, the plating. I'm just gonna sprinkle this and that rice. With some of this coriander. We might have to go up the plate a little bit. That might even look good. Don't know if it does. It looks a bit messy, maybe, but you know, we're, we're started now. Now, that hot, mildly. Oh, it smells amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right, and just going to gently get our bits of fish out. I'm just going to put them around the plate like that. So this is why I trim them down a little bit. If you're not fussed about plating, which most of the time I'm not, I only ooh, cook like this when I've got to take a fancy picture for Instagram. Maybe a few little bits of it skin side up. Gentle with it, because it will all start breaking up. It is nicely, delicately poached. Right, now this, what we've poached the fish in, is very similar to that, but it's got that fish flavor in it now as well. So we're gonna pour that in around our rice. Et voila. I'm gonna scrape those bits out of that pan though, because they're a fair bit of flavor in there still. And there you go. Um, what have we got? We've got some peanuts. We're just gonna scatter around like that. Had a nice textural difference. Um, I was thinking about, but it's quite late and I'm hungry, but I was going to maybe do the crunchy shallots I've done in another video. I'll put the link up in the side because they'd add a really nice textural difference instead of the uh, peanuts. And I'm just going to arrange some chilli on the top there like that. And there you go. 
Now I've got no idea if that's the same as what they did on Taskmaster. No, Taskmaster is my favourite show. I meant um, Master Chef. Might be completely different. Might be very similar. Might not be. No idea. Like I said I didn't actually watch the episode. But that's going to be absolutely beautiful, and it's going to be tasty as hell. Cannot go wrong. Didn't take that long. Just chuck a load of stuff in a pan. Like I said, if you want to add some coconut milk to that, you get yourself a nice Thai curry. You can add loads more chili to it if you want it really spicy. This is just a bit warm, to be fair. Uh, leave out the chili completely. Just have it with some noodles. What I would do is if I was having it with noodles, I'd cook the noodles in that pan so those noodles will soak up all that flavour. I just had a bit of sticky rice. I stuck the other bit of lemongrass I had, did the same, split it almost all the way through, banged it up and chucked that in with the rice so that rice is infused with that lemongrass as well. Uh, if I had some more kaffir lime, I would put some kaffir lime leaves in there as well, but I only had the one leaf. Well, that's like two leaves together, isn't it? But, but there you go. Um, I'm going to strain that off. I'm not going to leave all the bits in it. I'm going to strain that off, stick it in a pot, and i have that. With, I'll probably do it with some ramen for dinner tomorrow. This is amazing. I'm going to go eat it, because like I said, I'm absolutely starving. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, ring the bell, the notification thing. All of that helps me out. But yeah, that... Nice and easy. Probably took about 20 minutes, half hour in total. You can make it a bit quicker if you used already cooked prawns or something, really. Or you can just mix and match and just really riff on this. That Once you've got that stock, that broth in the background, the world's your oyster. I mean, I probably wouldn't put add cheese to it, but there's loads of other things you can go down. Cool. Um, that's that then. Be good. And that bit of... Coriander stems getting on my nerves. I don't know why. Cool. All right. I'll see you when I see you. Be good. And uh, bosh. See you when I see you. Bye.